is Laura Gavin, and I'm studying biochemistry here at NUI Galway. I'm going to show you how scientists extract DNA in the lab. So what is DNA? Well, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. This is the genetic inherited material found in the cells of all living things. DNA is incredible. Using just four building blocks, it codes for all the information that makes up living organisms. These are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. These building blocks are bound to a sugar phosphate backbone. Together, they make up the double helix. The double helix is wrapped around proteins and packed into the nucleus of the cell. Today, I will be extracting DNA from Baker's yeast cell. Like all cells, yeast cells have a cell membrane. In addition, they have a cell wall. We must break these down in order to extract the DNA. There are lots of different reasons for extracting DNA in the lab. I'll tell you about some of these later. But right now, let's go get some DNA. Here I have yeast cells, which I have grown up overnight in a flask, in rich media. In our lab, we use a centrifuge to gather the yeast cells. It does this by spinning them at very high speeds. Right now, I am using the centrifuge to separate the yeast cells from the liquid media. When using a centrifuge, we need to also insert a balance. If the centrifuge is not balanced, it will be unstable and it will not spin at the right speed. To balance the centrifuge, we put samples in the centrifuge directly across from each other. I have now collected the yeast cells here at the bottom of the tube. This is called the pellet. I am now using a pipette to remove the liquid part. This is called the supernatant. Next, I need to break down the cell membrane. I am doing this by using a pipette to mix it with lysis buffer. In the lab, we call this mixing resuspending. I am now going to add the solution to a fresh microfuse tube. To break down the cell wall, I am adding the enzyme zymolase. The enzyme zymolase works best at 37 degrees Celsius. I am now going to incubate the solution at 37 degrees Celsius for one hour. After one hour of incubation, I'm now going to spin down the cells in a smaller centrifuge for one minute, along with again including a balance. This gathers the nucleus at the bottom and separates it from the supernatant. I am now removing the supernatant. To break down the cellular and nuclear membrane, I am first resuspending the pellet in lysis buffer. Next, I am adding SDS. I will now incubate the solution at 65 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. 
This inactivates any enzymes that would normally digest DNA. I am now adding potassium acetate. This is a type of salt which will help remove proteins. I will then mix it well by inversion and place it on ice for 30 minutes. Placing it on ice slows down the breakdown of the DNA and slows any further enzyme activity. After 30 minutes, I am now placing the microfuse tube and the balance into the centrifuge again for 5 minutes. The DNA is now present in the liquid part, the supernatant. All proteins and cell debris are left in the pellet. I am now removing the supernatant and placing it in a new microfuse tube. Next, I am adding isopropanol. This will cause the DNA in the solution to aggregate and precipitate out. I'm now going to centrifuge the microfuse tube along with the balance again for one minute. This will pellet the DNA at the bottom so we can see it. I am now removing the isopropanol. I am now going to leave the DNA to air dry. Now that the DNA is dry, I am going to resuspend it in TE buffer. This protects the DNA from being degraded. Next, I'm going to add RNAs. This is an enzyme. This enzyme cuts any RNA, another type of nucleic acid, and ensures a pure extracted DNA. RNAs works best at 37 degrees Celsius. I am now going to incubate it at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. I am now going to precipitate the DNA out of solution. First, I am adding ammonium acetate. Ammonium acetate is a type of salt. Next, I am adding ethanol. DNA is insoluble in ethanol. I will then place the microfuse tube in the freezer overnight, which is at minus 20 degrees Celsius. This will help in the precipitation of the DNA. I'm now going to centrifuge the microfuse tube for one minute to pellet the DNA. I am now removing the supernatant. I'm then going to leave the DNA to air dry for a couple of minutes. Finally, I'm resuspending the DNA in TE buffer. This will prevent the DNA from being degraded. I have now successfully extracted DNA from yeast cells here in the lab. This DNA can be stored at 4 degrees Celsius in the fridge. Now that we've extracted the DNA, what can we do with it? Well, there are lots of different applications of extracted DNA, including DNA profiling, genetic engineering and medical diagnosis. 
let's go talk to someone who knows all about DNA extraction and its applications. I'm now here at Elaine Dunleavy's lab. Elaine is a researcher here in Inuai Galway. Elaine is going to tell us a little bit more about the applications of extracted DNA. My name is Dr. Elaine Dunleavy and I'm a research scientist here at NUI Galway. In my lab we study how cells divide. We extract DNA from cells in the lab and we then analyse the composition of the DNA so we can look for mutations that could give rise to disease. This is important for the treatment so we can find ways to treat and diagnose diseases such as cancer. Elaine's work, along with the work of many researchers who extract DNA in the lab, is very important. I hope you enjoyed seeing how and why scientists extract DNA. To find out more or to see how you can extract DNA at home, follow the links below.